of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. So cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Praise God. Praise God. I praise God for saving me. Praise God. Praise God. God for saving me. You know my soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me. Praise God. Shine on me, shine on me, let the light from the lighthouse shine on me, shine, glory to God. Jesus God, our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We praise you and we give you glory, recognizing that you are God. And beside you, there is none else. You're high and you're lifted up. The heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. And Lord, we stand before you, Lord, as humble as we know how. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us another week. Lord, you've opened doors and you've made ways. You've comforted our hearts. You've healed sick bodies. You've encouraged us, Lord God, to keep on running. And, Lord, we give you the praise for it right now. And we ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, to forgive us of our sins, our faults, and our failures. We recognize that our righteousness is as filthy rags. But, oh, God, you told us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And, oh, God, we thank you for knowing that we can obtain mercy. In the time of need, Lord, look on us today, O oh God, as we get ready to open up your word. Speak to our hearts, O oh God, as only you can. O oh God, give us that mind, Lord God, to continue, Lord God, to walk in your will and in your way. O oh God, but it's thy word that I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. O oh God, the psalmist said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And we thank you for your word this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that you look on Israel. You told us to pray for the peace of Israel. And I pray for them, Lord, that peace may come, Lord, that the guns may cease, the killing may stop. Oh, God, that the suffering may end, Lord, 
that they'll come together, Lord God, with peace. But, Lord, I recognize that it's all in your hands. Oh, God, and we trust in you, Lord God, because you know what you're doing. Oh, God, just have your way. Look on us here at Smyrna today, oh, God. I pray for those that are on their way. Oh, God, even us in Sunday school, help us. Oh, God, to be together on one accord as we look at your lesson today. Remember our pastor at all times and his wife. Oh, God, all the families represented here at Smyrna. Oh, God, even the sick and the afflicted, Lord God, that's unable to come out to the house of prayer. I pray for Jennifer Graves in Mississippi, Lord. Continue to touch her body, her and Mike. Oh, God, look on the Murphy family, Lord God, his brother, Lord God, suffering. Oh, God, I pray for them in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, just have your way today, Lord. We thank you. Oh, God, for us having this opportunity. Oh, God, to worship and to praise your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank the saints for coming to Sunday school. It's a very important part of our ministry. We thank our superintendent, Ellis Simpson, give him a hand that we're keeping it going because people are reach we are reaching people in our Sunday school all over this country. They're watching us on Sunday school. So it's very, very important for us to show up for Sunday school. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey man, our lesson today, today being November the 5th, 2023. We're going to be looking at a very popular verse of scripture. Amen. It is oftentimes posted all over the world. Amen. And that is John 3.16. We're going to be looking at everlasting life. Everlasting life. Our focus verse will be John Three verses sixteen. Let's all recite that together. John three sixteen. Let's read. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Praise the Lord. Our text will be coming from that third chapter, verses one through twenty one. And the truth about God reads. God gave his only begotten son so we might have everlasting life. Y'all believe that? Praise the Lord. I will embrace the new life I have in Jesus. Amen. There's less lesson connection that uh, records a gentleman by the name of Roland Stewart. And Roland Stewart, he has been accredited with being the one that started posting this verse, John 3.16, different sporting events, you know, different places around the town, he would post John 3.16. Amen. Olympics, at the Olympics, he, he posted it. At the Augusta National Golf Club, you know, where they play that popular tournament, the Masters Tournament, golf tournament, the Kentucky Derby, the World Series, the Super Bowl. It said, even the royal wedding of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. He wore a rainbow color wig, which helped draw attention to himself and ostensibly to John 316. It said he traveled 60,000 miles every year to promote this Bible verse. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and what an impact it has had on the world ever since. Now, but we learn here at the end of um, Mr. Stewart's life that for whatever reason, he got off track and ended up in jail. Praise the Lord. It says that uh, he married multiple times with his fourth wife filing for divorce over allegations of physical abuse. It says his behavior became increasingly erratic. And it says in 1991, September of 1991, he attempted to hold three hostages 
in a hotel room near Los Angeles International Airport. They had to sw send the SWAT team out, and they eventually arrested him, and he was sentenced to three consecutive life sentences in jail. And so he's currently in jail as we speak. Think about that. This man that started such a great movement ended up with a three consecutive life sentence, jail sentence, because of terrible behavior. Let me ask a question. Do you think? message that he was sending? Do you think it has any impact on his work that he did when it comes to promoting John 3.16? Anybody? Well, everybody getting quiet on me this morning. This man who ended up in jail with uh, three consecutive life sentences. Before he got off track, he started a movement of posting John 316 all around the world. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a movement that he started that goes on to this day. But he ended up in jail for the rest of his life. The, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Diggin. Everything has consequences. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. he Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word is going to stand forever. Yes. <coughs> Absolutely. Go ahead, Sister Deborah. Yes. Mm. Glory to God. Amen. When it, when it comes to God's word, nothing can stand against his word. It's going to stand. It's going to be true no matter who's declaring it. Praise the Lord. And see, that is the lesson that people have to learn. We are so often guilty of lifting up the messenger. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We lift up and we exalt the messenger, the person. But a lot of times, what do we do? We forget the message. What's more important, the messenger or the message? It's the message. Amen. Mr. Stewart, he's going to be dead and gone just like all of us. But God's word is going to stand forever. Hallelujah. Go ahead, Sister Deborah. Yes. So you don't have to follow the message to be all right with what you think God is calling you to do. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you don't you don't you don't care what the message is. You don't care what the agenda is. Amen. 
man. Glory to God. Go ahead, Deacon Watkins. And I have to em emphasize this very much. The word of God is what's going to stand. It's what upholds us. Where would we be without the word of God? Even though this man's end was tragic, but God so loved the word. It's being posted all around the world. And how many people you think are coming to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because of that. So many. God can use whoever he wants to. Go ahead. Amen. So the word got healing power. God send the word and the word accomplishes, doesn't it? Glory to God. It said it won't return unto him what? void but it's going to accomplish everything wherever it's sent praise the lord amen so the message is more important than the messenger nicodemus came by night very popular story that we've been over many times over the year this jewish pharisee came to Jesus at night. He had an interest in this prophet, this teacher, this rabbi. Amen. So he was a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, the highest governing Jewish religious authority. So he was a religious leader. Amen. So it says, it's, it is likely that Nicodemus approached Jesus at night because he didn't want his fellow Pharisees to know about this visit. Most of the other Sanhedrin members hated Jesus because he wasn't afraid to confront their hypocrisy at, with truth. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ doing his ministry, he was really hard on the religious leaders of his day. Because he called them hypocrites. He pointed out their inconsistencies. And how did they respond? They didn't like it. Praise the Lord. If you're walking with God and God sends somebody to you and they tell you the truth, it doesn't matter how much it hurt, you better listen. Because if God is sending you a message. Amen. The old saying is that the truth hurts. And sometimes it does. But not only does the truth hurt, the truth has healing power. The truth has reconciliation power. The truth is meant to help us. What would you call a person that gets angry and upset I'm talking about a saved person that gets angry and upset when they're confronted with truth. What would you call that type of person? Somebody that needs to go back to the altar. <laughs> what would you call them, Mother Carter? They need help. Amen. The truth ain't always easy to accept. But you need to humble yourself. Amen. Humble yourself and ask for help or try to get that situation together. That's how you're going to grow spiritually. Very important lesson to learn when it comes to spiritual maturity. How you handle, and not only how you handle truth, but how you apply it to your life. The truth of the scriptures. It says, Nicodemus acknowledged Jesus came from God. 
He said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. John 3, verse 2. This seed of faith drew Nicodemus to Jesus. So he's seen the miracles, you know, it was like a seed. Jesus doing these things to show people the power that he had in his ministry. And it caused and it brought up curiosity. It made people want to follow him. And Nicodemus was seeing all of this. And he said, nobody can do what you're doing except God be with him. Praise the Lord. But it says, Jesus answered an unasked question. It says, as Jesus so often did in the gospel accounts, he cut straight to the heart of the matter. Jesus said to Nicodemus, John 3, verse 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So Nicodemus come acknowledging who Jesus is, and Jesus went right straight to what Nicodemus needed. Now, if Jesus was like us, how do you think G how do you think Jesus would have responded when, when Nicodemus came and said that I know that God is with you? Because if you know if he you know what you doing, God got to be with you. Now, if, he, if Jesus was like us, how do you think he'd have responded to Nicodemus, Nicodemus saying that? Uh, you know, like we'll say, we often like to say this, like we can say, uh, or, you know, you get caught up, you know, and getting, you know, like self-aggrandizement, you know, get a little cut, little, you know, win in your jaw, you get a little, you know, lifted up. And start, you know, talking about, man, I'm good. You know, you, I'm good this time. I was at this church or, you know, I was in this city. I was doing this down here. But Nicodemus didn't do that, did he? I mean, Jesus didn't do that, did he? He went straight to what Nicodemus needed. Nicodemus was one of the religious leaders. And y'all remember what I said. The religious leaders was the ones that Jesus got on the most because of their hypocrisy. And Nicodemus was running around with these people. Matter of fact, he came at night because he didn't want his, his uh, brethren to see that he was meeting with Jesus. You know, but Jesus let Nicodemus know, except a man be born again. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. John 3 says, except a man be born again, he can what? He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Y'all think about that. If you want to go to heaven, what must you do? Be born again. Got to repent. Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And tear around the altar and wait for the promise of the Holy Ghost. Speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. Amen. This is what Peter told him to do, didn't he? Right. Yes, sir. The promise wasn't just to this, that, that one, but the promise unto you and unto your children and those that are far off. As many as the Lord our God shall call. So this is for everybody. You've got to be born again if you want to enter into the kingdom of God. Y'all believe that? Amen. After Jesus told him, it says Nicodemus responded to Jesus with a question. How? It says, unlike the critics of Christianity who have ridiculed the claims of Jesus, Throughout the centuries, Nicodemus was no scoffer. He was a sincere seeker who wouldn't mo let momentary confusion dissuade him from pursuing truth. So notice that right there. It says Nicodemus was a sincere seeker. 
He came to God with a sincere heart. You can't have no hidden agenda when you come to God. That's just like uh, Deacon Watkins said, Jesus, God knows everything about us. You can hide things from people, but you can't hide nothing from God. He knows our downsetting and our uprising. He says he even knows our thoughts from a fall. Glory to God. God knows what's in your mind. He knows what's on your heart. Go ahead. Mother Bigger, they say the hairs on your head is even numbered. Praise the Lord. God knows us. And it says that Nicodemus was sincere. He wanted to know truth. Praise the Lord. You come to God, you got to really be sincere in your heart. And God, the Bible says that he resists the proud. That that person that's lifted up in pride, God resists the proud. He said, but he gives grace to the humble. Praise the Lord. You come to him humbly, and God will accept you. But you come with a hidden agenda, and you're not sincere, then God don't deal with you. He keep you at a distance. Do you want God to keep you at a distance or do you want to be close to him? Praise the Lord. I want to be close to God. If you want to be close, be honest with him. You can't hide nothing from him no way. Praise the Lord. You can talk to him about anything, things that you can't tell nobody, you can tell God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is there some things that you've told God in your walk with him that you be embarrassed to tell other people? Huh? Can you anybody know? Give us some things that you talk to God about that you wouldn't talk to nobody about. Go ahead, Deacon. Yes. Yes. Stops right there. Praise the Lord. Y'all know how that works. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Uh, so, so and so and so and so. Uh, now, this just between me and you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's everybody. Spread like a fire. Go ahead, Mother Watkins. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. It travels. Mm hmm. Yeah. It, they're, they're mumbling. Yeah. Stops right there. Lord, have mercy. Amen. That's, that's a lesson you have to learn, ain't it? Praise him. Yeah. yeah. Tell 10,000. Amen. I acknowledge Jesus knows my thoughts. Jesus offered comforting assurance to all who approach God in prayer. Your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Matthew 6 and 8. This is good news because most of us really don't know what we need. Like Nicodemus, we may come to Jesus with a certain purpose in mind, hoping to receive a particular answer. But because he knows both our thoughts and our deepest needs, he can redirect us toward what is truly important. Amen. That's one of the most beautiful things about prayer and having a close relationship with God is that a lot of times we don't really even know what we need spiritually. 
But because of our close relationship with the Lord and studying his word and, and prayer and fasting, what God does, he manipulates or he, uh, you know, articulates our lives in a way that leads us in the right direction. He let things go on in your life that will cause you to go down the path that you need to go down. That's when you walk in close with him. Amen. Anybody ever notice in your walk with God, the years you've walked with him, how God has been directing your path? Praise the Lord. Things happen and, you know, when they first happen, you don't understand why they happen. But then once God brings you through it, you learn God was doing this in my life. Y'all see what I'm saying? God knows what we need. And he knows how to bring it to pass in our lives. Praise the Lord. We must be born of water. <clears throat> it is clear from the context of this conversation that Jesus was referring to water baptism when he said we must be born of water. The opening chapter of John's gospel includes a discussion between John the Baptist and representatives sent from the Pharisees about the importance of water and holy and holy spirit baptism john the baptist was baptizing his followers in the jordan river but he received a supernatural sign that jesus was the son of god who would baptize with the holy ghost praise the lord immediately following his conversation with nicodemus jesus and his followers went into the land of judea and baptized Given the many New Testament statements and examples stressing the importance of water baptism in Jesus' name, it is imperative we obey Jesus' command to be born of water if we want to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. So water baptism is a necessity to enter in the kingdom. When you are baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you take on his name. The church is often called the bride of Christ. When a bride gets married to her husband, what does she do? She takes on his name. Amen. When we get baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are taking on the name of Jesus Christ and we are entering into the church, which is the body of Christ, and the bride of Christ. Praise the Lord. Now, there is a lot of uh, speculation and controversy when it comes to how to be baptized. Some have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But nobody in Scripture was never baptized using the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. When they were baptized, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pray, Father is a title. Son is a title. Holy Ghost is a title. But what is the name? His name is Jesus. No other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. We take on his name in water baptism. Praise the Lord. We must be born of the spirit. We cannot stop with water baptism. Jesus clearly stated that the full new birth experience also includes spirit baptism. Spirit baptism will be accompanied by a sign. Jesus said he compared spirit baptism to the blowing of the wind. Praise of Jesus noted that both the wind and the birth of the Spirit are accompanied by a sound, which is usually translated a voice in other New Testament passages. When the Holy Spirit fell on the day of Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, Acts 2 and 2. The wind of the Spirit produced another sound, the voices of believers speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The 120 believers who had gathered in the upper room in Jerusalem 
in obedience to Christ's command, were the first to experience the new birth. Jesus had described to Nicodemus, but that, but they were not the last. Today, millions of believers around the world have been baptized in Jesus' name and have received the Spirit, the Holy Spirit indicated by speaking in tongues, just as Jesus described to Nicodemus. And then it says again, Nicodemus did not understand. This religious teacher had begun the conversation by stating, we know. But in only a few sentences, Jesus had stretched Nicodemus' understanding past the breaking point. Despite his extensive knowledge of the scriptures, notice he was a Pharisee. He was a scholar in the law of Moses. It says Nicodemus didn't grasp what Jesus was saying. Sadly, many faithful religious people are still in the dark about water and spirit baptism and have never personally experienced what Jesus described. Human intelligence is not sufficient to comprehend spiritual truths. Let me say that again. Human intelligence is not able to discern spiritual truths. It is the Spirit of God, Paul said, in that uh, second chapter of 1 Corinthians. He said that the Spirit searches the deep things of God. God's spiritual truth cannot be learned. They have to be revealed by the Spirit of God. Divine revelation opens up our minds to spiritual truths. Because only the Spirit of God, which is God, it does the work of God here on earth. His Spirit is what opens up our mind to the will of God. And the beautiful part about it, he doesn't overwhelm us. Praise the Lord. God gives it to us line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. It's like, you know, the potter that's got the, the, the clay on the, on the spinning wheel, and he's just working with it, getting it right. Praise the Lord. If God was to just, boom, you know, put all this word on us at one time, it'll blow our mind. He gives us just enough, you know, to keep us going. Praise the Lord. I hate to see so many people when they get saved. You know, just think all of a sudden that they know everything. You know, how can you know everything when it comes to God? Who, who, who knows the mind of God? That's what the scripture said. Or who have sat with him in council? Praise the Lord. So he hid it from the wise and the prudent and revealed it to what? Babe. So you, when you come to God, you are a spiritual infant. And God don't give you no set of daggone T-bone steak down in front of you with a knife and a fork. If, 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 you, if you did that to a baby, you set him a T-bone steak down there, you know, with a knife and fork, and then put you some Heinz 57 sauce right there for him, what he going to do? He going to start crying, ain't he? Because what he want? He want that milk. Praise the Lord. Now, Little Robert Anthony, boy, you know, he's getting past that bottle a little bit now, but when he would see that bottle, oh, boy, it set something off in him. That's the way we are as spiritual babes, you know. Now, some of us are more mature, but still, you know, it's times when we need that sincere milk of the word. Praise God. They say milk is what? Good for the bones. The bones is what? It's your frame. It's what holds you up. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Make your bones strong. Amen. As babes in Christ desire the sincere milk of the word. Praise the Lord. So it's bad when people a lot of times get to a point that where they think they know it all. None of us know it all. We're still learning. We're still growing in Christ. 
Praise the Lord. It says the world, I quoted part of this, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. It says the world by wisdom knew not God. And that remains the case today. Human wisdom will not produce supernatural results. It can't do it. Amen. It's the spirit of God. You need the spirit of God to open up to you the truths and the spiritual things of God. I will be baptized in water and spirit. The good news is that salvation does not require great intellect. Notice that. Glory to God. You ain't got to have no daggone four or five degrees on the wall to be saved. Praise the Lord. Matter of fact, that is a hindrance to some folks. They got so much education, they think they know everything. They've been exposed to so much that they were, it, it, they're too far gone to understand spiritual things. Paul said that knowledge puffeth up. Knowledge causes some folks to get lifted up.